Let's just turn it. Ooh, there we go. I am absolutely obsessed with art, and I've realized that most people in my life are not. So I am launching a brand new show today that's called Best Art on Earth, where we go over all the best art that I can find that's happening on our planet right now. And how do you know they're the best? Because I said. If you're just into art, whether it's that you're an art enthusiast or you're a collector or you're an artist, this show is for you. And today I'm going to make a case that Tom Booth is one of the best illustrators that's doing art right now. His Woodworker series has absolutely exploded in popularity and for very good reason. I want to show you exactly why he's so popular. We are going to go underneath his artistic hood. We're going to open up the engine of his art and break down fundamentally why his art works so good. And I'm not going to waste any of your time. We're going to do it in five minutes. So let's switch camera views and break down why his Woodcarver series is one of the best illustrations out there right now. So the main thing that we need to remember here while we go over this is that Tom is an illustrator and an illustrator's job is to tell as much story with their art as possible. All these fundamentals you're going to see are just storytelling devices. So if you're into telling stories with your art, this is a really good time to pay attention to what Tom uses. So first storytelling and art fundamental that he uses shape. Tom knows how to use shape better than almost any artist I've ever seen. Immediately when you look at this character, you can see the blockiness that is these squares that he's used in his character. And the size of these hands, these square giant hands, it tells you who this character is. Even these circles have a lot of girth to them. And what it is, is it's telling you how strong and powerful this character is. If you look at it, almost all of Tom's pieces of his character here are based off of different shapes and by putting this character up against his female carving here the smoothness that is her shapes so this shape language really helps him convey who these characters are without any words just immediately when you look at it you know who they are so the next major fundamental i'm seeing everywhere in this piece is texture from his clothes you see different uh crosswork there to even his skin to the wood to the bark you're seeing texture, down to his pants. The grass has this line that are going up his shoes. Even back here in the, ba in the background where it should be just plain white, he has texture. Texture is touching every part of this piece. Now here's the cool part about that. I'm gonna zoom in so you can kind of look at all the different texture that he's got going on here. What's awesome about that is sometimes with such strong shape language, you would say, oh, that looks too fantastical or it looks too cartoony. So by adding this texture in, he makes it feel like it's alive. So it doesn't matter that maybe the proportions aren't perfectly human on this character. He's, he's found another way to breathe life into it. And it feels so real, even though it does have more of that cartoony proportion. And that is such a cool way that he's used shape and texture together as a team to make this art even more awesome, even feel more like it's real. Those are the first two major ones that stick out to me, but here's the big one. Emphasis. This piece is a masterclass in emphasis, okay? Let me show you why. So the main thing that I'm meaning when I say emphasis is focal point, which is, in my opinion, right here, or even more so right here. The focal point is what the artist wants you to look at at least to start, okay? And he's used at least two or three of these other fundamentals to get you there. First, color. If you look at the color from here and here, you would say they're almost the same color. He's just slightly darker than her, but it's not about their color as much as it is the colors that are around them. If you look at everything he's wearing, if you look at here, he's got these dark greens and dark gray blues and even the pants here are more the blue everything that he is wearing is on this cold scale right here okay and if you look over at her yes she has very similar skin tone here but if you look over at what's surrounding her dark browns and oranges immediately the colors hop to here with not to say orange but more of these skin tones reds dark browns 
kind of what he's trying to say in the story is that she is some kind of warm, sweet memory in his mind, and he's almost stuck in this cold world on his own now. That's the least part of the story I'm getting here. Next, we're going to look at how everything in this painting is very straight up and down. Notice the tree. He himself is very straight up and down for the most part. Very flat here. The horizon is very flat. Everything's very 90 degrees. Even down here, you have all these lines, these grass lines that are pointing straight up and down and the plants as well. And you even have the bark going up and down for the most part. And then you look at her and she's the opposite. Again, contrast. She has all these really round lines going around her. First off, to frame her in this. Second off, you have all these flowing lines that are pointing to her. She is, for the most part, not only moving, where everything seems very stationary, he's very, you know, standing in the same spot. She's almost flowing out of this tree. Everything about her is at an angle. Nothing is straight up and down. Okay? He's used contrast once again to create emphasis. And he's used color to create emphasis. And to go right along with this frame that we talked about here that he's put around her, you also have this white section. This white section. You have white on the outside here and down here, but you have this one white section right where he wants you to look. He's really got the biggest contrast of color and absence of color right here to make you look at the focal point of this. This emphasis is so heavy in this piece. Two bonus things that I want to talk about just that aren't necessarily fundamentals, but they are storytelling elements that he has in here. It's very important if you look at this piece that he is not smiling. This might seem obvious, but remembering of the relationship he had with this woman, you might misinterpret this as him falling in love with his own creation. And that's a very different story than the one that Tom's trying to tell here. Second important storytelling piece that I'm seeing is that in nowhere on this piece do the sculpture and the wood carver touch. Yes, he's touching the wood here, but there is a gap between her and him. And up here where she's reaching out to him, still a gap. I think in this piece, he's trying to talk about how when you've had someone in your life and they're no longer there, you can see them, you can hear them, but you can't physically be with them. You can't, you can't feel their warm embrace. And that's kind of the feeling that I'm getting here. I think that that says volumes. It's quite the storytelling piece that he's added to this. I don't know if Tom did that intentionally. I would like to think he did, but it definitely adds something to this piece. And that's my breakdown of Tom's woodcarver. If you're as blown away with this art as I am, you're in luck. Tom is currently in the middle of a Kickstarter that he's taking this woodcarver and all the art from that series, and he's turning it into a mobile game called Pine. And this isn't sponsored by Tom. Tom doesn't even know that I'm doing this video as I'm shooting it. I'm gonna ask him later if he's cool with it. He's making a story-driven video game with all of this art. It looks super atmospheric. It looks gorgeous. Obviously, it has this art as its style. And you can get a copy of the game for five bucks. From what I can see on the Kickstarter, I'm super excited. If you want to back this and get in on this game, I'll put it in the description. If you're looking for a great indie artist to support, this is definitely one of them. I can't wait to do more of these episodes. This is super fun, and I'm very excited for this series. So thanks again, and go check out Tom's stuff.